Hello, everybody. This is Jeff Sutherland, host and producer of Jeff Star Talk and Discovery Park. We're on the air, so make sure you tell a friend. We're here with uh, the Tower Park in Lodi for the opening of our show tonight, and this is John Nordenberg. He's our uh, pilot, if you will. He's our driver, and, you know, we're going to do a scenes from the classic 1967 film, MGM, The Dirty Dozen. Now, this film starred Lee Marvin and an all-star cast. Clint Walker was one of the dozen. You'll see Clint Walker tonight. Also, Ernie Bordnine was one of the generals. You'll see him. You'll see George Kennedy, veteran actor. And, and our special guest is Trini Lopez, who was one of the dirty dozen himself. So, a lot of great shows. So, stay tuned now. And without further ado, let's get on to our very first guest. And that is the one and only Trini Lopez. Major Reisman, you are ordered by Allied Command to select 12 general prisoners, convicted by courts martial and sentenced to be executed or serve lengthy prison terms for murder, rape, robbery, and other crimes of violence. And you will deliver them secretly behind enemy lines in France to undertake a mission of sabotage that could change the course of the war. The 12 men will be known as the Dirty Dozen. Lee Marvin as Major John Reisman. There's a little of Major Reisman in every man, says Marvin. Tough and unyielding, yet compassionate. I think it's the best role I've ever been asked to play. You've all volunteered for a mission which gives you just three ways to go. Either you can follow up in training and be shipped back here for immediate execution of sentence, or you can follow up in combat, in which case I will personally blow your brains out, or you can do as you're told, in which case you might just get by. Now you hold it right there. This war was not started for your private gratification, and you can be damn sure that this army isn't being run for your personal convenience either. Ernest Borgnine as General Warden. I'm tired of seeing generals portrayed as desk-bound pen pushers, says Borgnine. So I've played Warden as a rough professional soldier. Robert Ryan as Colonel Everett Dasher Breed. There were officers like Breed, says Ryan who could never suffer the rules broken or even bend a little. Major Reisman's compliments, sir. Tell him well it's strong. You prefer to be captured or destroyed. Jimmy Brown as Napoleon Jefferson. Jefferson is any man fighting for recognition against the odds, says Brown. I think I understand him pretty well. The hell is John Cassavetes as Victor Franco, says Cassavetes. Franco is a petty hoodlum forced to heroism by circumstances beyond his control. We go on that mission, we all get killed. That's what they want! That's what they want! Trini Lopez as Jimenez. He's crawling with hate. Charles Bronson as Vladislaw. The last guy in the world you'd expect to be a hero. <laughs> Telly Savalas as Archer Maggot. Maggot is a maniac, says Savalas. His religious fanaticism can never be moderated or quelled. It is a constant danger. <laughs> Clint Walker as Samson Posey. An Indian with war paint smeared on his soul. Train them. Excite them. Arm them. And turn them loose on the Nazi High Command. Trini Lopez. And the guy who's the first time ever, <laughs> he's already making me laugh already. And I, I met him for the first time, and this is the one and only legendary Trini Lopez. Trini, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Jeff. And Trini Lopez, this is your first show here at the Mickey Sonardi Show, and what do you think of it? Oh, it's great. It's a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying running into so many of my old-time friends. Yep. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of them here. That's a, oh, yeah. The place is full. Yep. And, you know, I was going to... I brought in two record albums, and I knew that Trini was here, and this record store was going out of business. I said, hey, I found two <laughs> albums 
in good condition, according to Trini, too. And this is one of the recordings that he did, and he signed it for me. And it's a beautiful Trini Lopez live, and uh, and a basic yeah, yeah thank New York. you, beautiful, beautiful, Trini. Now you, uh, we told we told me off camera that you're originally from Texas, and I'm from Oklahoma. Yes, sir. Uh, did you always want to be in show business? How did that come about? Music first, right? Uh, well, my father was a singer. Mm -hmm. My father was an actor, a musician, and a dancer. Wow! So because of my dad, I got into singing. Wow! Yes, yes. Sir. At an early age, very young. I was about. Uh, well, let me tell you how young I was. My guitar was bigger than I was. Oh wow! Yeah, so that's. Now, I mean, how long did it take you to play the guitar as well as you do? Well, it took me a while because the 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 uh, guitar. It's a very difficult instrument to play. It is. Very difficult. Everybody thinks it is, looks uh, easy, but it is not. It's not an easy instrument to learn. I, yeah. I believe you. Yeah, you have to really be dedicated. Because I picked it up and I, I can't make uh, heads or tails out of it. Oh, yeah. But uh, you were dedicated as yes, a young sir. man. Yes, sir. I, uh, I fell in love with, uh, with playing the guitar when I was eight or nine. And then I just uh, kept, stayed with it. I stayed with it. And because of uh, my father, wanting me to learn something constructive because of my dad I got going with my career wow and what a career it was too Thank you. And, and you started out now what is your uh, you had a lot of good uh, big major hits Did, were you also the writer of some of your songs some of them uh-huh yeah. uh, I, I have the adaptation for La Bamba mm -hmm. BMI the uh, broadcasting uh, music in yeah. company out of New York that's one of the biggest publishing and copyright offices in the world they gave me the rights to La Bamba because of the adaptation that I had for La Bamba when I wrote it. Wow. And then I wrote a song called I'm Coming Home Cindy, which was another big hit. And I have three or four other ones that were big hits for me. But the biggest ones were, besides La Bamba, I had Lemon Tree. I love that very one. Big. Yep. And uh, If I Had a Hammer. Yep, that was another good one too. And Kansas City. Kansas City. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like Lemon Tree. That Lemon was tree. a great yeah. one. Yeah. It was, you know, we wanted to tap your feet with that one. Yes, sir. Now, when you were really, really popular in the 1960s, when did you come, leave Texas and come back to uh, come to uh, L.A. for the first time? I came to Hollywood in 1960 to join Buddy Holly's group called the Crickets. Oh, wow. Yeah. We all know what happened there. Yes, sir. And uh, Buddy was my friend, and I met him in, uh, in Wichita Falls, Texas, a little town outside of... Dallas. I was born and raised in Dallas. Yeah. But I was working in uh, this little nightclub in uh, in uh, Wichita Falls. Right. And Buddy saw me, and he liked me a lot. And he said, "Trini," I said, "Would you like to meet my record producer?" And I said, "Yeah, sure." He said, "Okay." He said, "Well, can you come to Clovis, New Mexico?" And uh, uh, I would like to have him meet you. Maybe you guys can get a deal, and maybe you can uh, start recording. I said, "Oh, Buddy, that would be great." Whoa. He took he took a liking to me. So I, I packed up my, my station wagon with my five guys in my band, and I was the sixth guy in the group. It was, I was the leader and all that, and the singer, lead singer and all. And, uh, and I came to, uh, to Clovis. Unfortunately, you and I were talking before we went on the air. Yeah. We were talking about how prejudiced it has been for a long time in Texas and that oh, part of the world. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I never dreamed that. Of that part of the world. And yeah. that, that's what, how it was for me. So I was having a kind of a hard time uh, being a Latino in Texas. And uh, so the, my guys in my band were all Anglo. They were all white guys. And uh, they uh, got jealous because Buddy Holly now likes me. And he wanted me to meet his hotshot record producer. And so you know what they did? Yeah. They, they conspirated against me. And uh, said, Trini, I, I think what we're going to do now, let's not call it the Trini Lopez and his combo anymore. And you're not going to be the lead singer anymore. Uh, and you're not going to be uh, the manager anymore. We're all going to go commune. We're all going to go commune. And I said, I said, what does it mean? I didn't know what, what the, this is 1959. Right. And I said, what does it mean commune? And they said, that means community property. That means all of us are going to share everything. And we're all going to sing. I said, wait a minute. You guys don't know how to sing. I knew they didn't know how to sing. They were musicians. They weren't singers. They said, well, well we're all going to sing. Jealousy has an ugly head, don't it? Yes, sir. Yep. So, so what happened was um, I, I had to bear the, the situation there. And I went back to, I took them all back to Texas because we drove to New Mexico. And I started a whole new band. 